Bryston is situated on the west coast of the Isle of Wight, half a mile inland from the sea, with a village store and newsagent in the main street. In 2010, the National Trust shop was in North Street, where from September the manager took tree bookings for the festival. Chris Goodman is now Chief Administrator and Coordinator for the event. Give me an idea of the heights of the trees as well. That would be tremendously helpful. Thank you very much indeed. Advertising is vital and Bob can be seen each November cycling round the village, putting up posters to attract a wide response. In the weeks before the festival, groups get together to create and make decorations for the individual trees. During this time spent together making and creating, there is a compelling sense of belonging, taking part, contributing to what is now a firm fixture in the annual calendar. A few days before the official opening, there is a sense of busyness as people gather in the church to put up their own displays. With the number and size of trees increasing yearly, extra tables have to be set up and the vital electrical equipment taken out of storage, safely hidden away each year in a corner of the church roof space. <laughs> I think that's it, Rob. There's two lots. That's it then, is it? Yeah. The mobile phone enables Chris to be in contact with people throughout the festival, ensuring all goes smoothly. Two days to go, and the stage in the Wilberforce Hall is about to undergo a complete transformation. Busy Bee, one of the island's well-known garden centres, has agreed to put up a display. It's a challenge to fill the space and create a dynamic effect. From their van, they offload artefacts. Just putting a big bag of coal into the front of the fireplace. And do a DIY makeover on the stage. The bulb was lit as well, you know, it wasn't as though it was a bulb that wasn't lit. No, there's a cap out there actually, isn't there? At the same time, groups are busy decorating their individual trees to create sparkling displays. <laughs> There has always been a strong link between the parish church and the Methodist chapel, which accommodates trees from groups which use their building for their activities, as well as outside organisations. For the past few years, sets of cribs from all corners of the globe have been on display. Their interpretations of the Christmas story for visitors to reflect upon. On the eve of the festival, 
the annual service and lighting of the hospice tree takes place. We're going to begin our service by singing together the hymn number 12, the carol number 12, Hartley, Herald Angels Sing. Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who came last year, you'll remember that the best way of doing this is to have a countdown, all right? And that's where we have audience participation as well. So we're going to start at 10 and go down to 1, and at 1, Karen and I will switch on the hospice tree. So are you all ready? Yes. 10, 10 9, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And this Christmas, bless us all with your peace, your love, and your joy. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest and remain with each one of you and all those whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hello. 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 Nice to meet you. Hello. Lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you too. How are you? Hello. 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 She has come to switch on the lights of the Tree of Joy at the Methodist Chapel. We've got a rush so, bag. Uh, have you tried walking on water? No, but when you build a bridge... Yes, yes. <laughs> no way. <laughs> <laughs> Just be controversial. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, it's been quite a while since I've been here. Uh, Sally has to get the uh, 445 red jet, so she'll be leaving here in approximately 30 minutes or so. Uh, probably after the children have sung to us later on. Okay. So we look forward to that. And so uh, we just pray that uh, the, uh, the likes of this tree will for us be a picture of the light of the world as Christ's light shines in front of us on our life's journey. Malcolm. Well, we're going to begin our service by just hearing a few words of scripture from St. John's Gospel, where we hear those familiar words, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And he was God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. As we approach the Christmas season, we approach with anticipation and looking forward to all the things that happen at Christmas. One of the most important things that we must remember at Christmas is that it's more than the tinsel and the presents and the parties. It's the light of God coming into the world. And we ask that he will send his light, his love and his joy on all of us this Christmas and always. And so that is really what we're celebrating here as we ask Sally now to like the truth. Thank you so much for inviting me here. I was just saying to Chris Goodman, who's organised this all for me to get here and be with you today, that in more than 20 years of doing BBC South today, I have never, ever been allowed out in an afternoon <laughs> and then to get back to do South today. <laughs> big clap, big cheer. You ready? Three, two, one.
For centuries, the big bells have rung out announcing official occasions or calling people to Sunday worship, as well as services to commemorate times of joy and celebration or times of sadness and reflection. Each year, our loyal team ring out a wonderfully challenging peal at the close of Saturday's events. The Credora Recorder Ensemble are also regular performers on the Saturday afternoon and their seasonal instrumental music provides a link to all the visual sights. Tucked in the chancel between the choir stalls, the handbell group add their musical contribution and welcome the sound of the congregation when they too join in with the most familiar and well-loved carols. In the Wilberforce Hall, there is an opportunity to rest and have a hot drink and homemade Christmas fare. We hope that while sitting amongst so many colourful trees, people can also feel the warm glow of the fire on the stage, warming their hearts or calming troubled minds. While Santa is still sleeping soundly before his hectic parcel delivery round the world, Two miles beyond Bryston lies the 12th century church of St Peter and St Paul Mottiston. Here the visitor can enjoy displays created by the local beaver pack. Their paper chains bring back memories of bygone Christmases for many people too. In the quiet and peace of this ancient building, there is an opportunity to reflect on the message of seasonal peace on earth, goodwill to all men. Whether we are young or old, we are all aware of the excitement and anticipation of the coming of Christmas. But do we all experience the powerful message of peace, love, joy and hope which it represents? During a visit, people spend time looking very carefully and prayerfully at the words of comfort and happiness conveyed in many of the decorations within the trees. There is a wealth of talent displayed in the hangings, made with thought and care, bringing a smile or a quiet chuckle at the humour displayed too. Watching the twinkling lights, sharing the stillness, there is a sense of being drawn into a circle of love. Senior hospice staff have attended the Lights of Love carol service on the Wednesday prior to the opening of the festival. Various CEOs have represented the Mountbatten Hospice each year. One year, the Reverend Helena Sullivan took a carriage ride to Mottiston Church with enthusiastic response on the way. A glance in the programme illustrates the breadth and depth of charities, both local and national, which benefit from the donations taken at these four venues. But there are other events over the four days which can be discovered, including a craft fair in the Scout Hut, carols with the Village Society, the Village School Fair, 
and a stirring concert by the Sandown and Shanklin military band. For several years, the director of music has put on a Stars of Wonder concert to support Love Russia. This musical evening demonstrates the wealth of talent by individual musicians, as well as choirs and bands, both local and island-wide. did work right from year one was that the festival captured the imagination of people well beyond the confines of the worshipping church community and attracted people in and drew them together. So from a very early stage we ensured that the proceeds were shared by a very wide range of charities and groups, some local, some national but all who had been represented in the festival in some way. The second year we spread to two venues, using the village hall as well as the church. Over the next few years, full sit-down meals and Sunday Christmas lunches took place. The new Methodist church became our third venue, and then extended to Modiston Church, two miles away. Bryston Christmas Tree Festival became the place to go.
village was alive with people and every venue was full. Festival, now in its 23rd year, began by the Reverend Tim Eady with just 30 trees. He returned this year with his wife Julie to discover there are now over 250 trees. What started as a modest display of 30 Christmas trees in St Mary's Church has over the years developed into a very colourful and meaningful event where over 250 trees can be seen in eight venues. Our former rector of St Mary's Church Bryston, the Reverend Tim Eady, grew up selling Christmas trees. His father had 10 acres of Norwegian spruces. Every December, from the age when he could first wield a spade, was spent digging and selling trees. So you could say Christmas trees were in his blood. Whilst he was visiting his parents, he went to see the Christmas tree festival at Aldwinkle in Northamptonshire. He immediately thought it was something he could try in Bryston. The first festival in Bryston was in December 1997. It was a small affair with just 30 trees. The community were excited and took to it immediately. They were very inventive and produced some very clever and thought-provoking displays. What didn't work was inviting people to vote for their favourite trees. It was too contentious and was not repeated. The Reverend Tim Eady is seen here discussing new exciting display ideas, like the models he acquired to make a full-size nativity scene with the three wise men leading from the churchyard to the manger in the outbuilding on the side of the church. 2015 was the year when the Fit Bus was introduced taking visitors to the festival from Bryston to Mottiston and now Halverston. The addition of the hospice tree for the Earl Mountbatten Hospital brought more people and of course a full supporting range of concerts and services. We raised thousands of pounds and always gave it to charity. All the trees told a story. They informed about a charity or were just stunning to look at. By the time the Reverend Tim Eady and his family left Bryston, regular annual trips were being made to the opening day of the festival display at Busy Bee Garden Centre for any new ideas. A big trade craft store generated thousands of pounds in its own right. After expenses, electricity in particular, the thousands raised was always given to charity. In 2006, the Reverend Tim Eady said farewell after 10 glorious years. The 
Western Christmas Tree Festival has since gone from strength to strength and to date has raised over £100,000 for local and national charities. In 2015, Chris Goodman was delighted to receive the runner-up in the Community Action Awards, the first for the festival, and was somewhat shocked and embarrassed to receive the Personal Judges Special Award for himself. The Isle of Wight Pearl initially just offered an additional venue. Since then their input has been fantastic. Now funding a minibus, organising and decorating the Santa's Grotto, offering free mulled wine, use of their car park for the park and ride, arranging and paying for new signage, managing the Facebook page and providing free cakes for the catering in the Wilberforce Hall. VIP visits have included Alan Titchmarsh, High Sheriff, Sally Taylor and Joe Kent, BBC South Today. Different High Sheriffs have been guests of honour at the Modest and Carroll service for many years. The Wilberforce Hall decorations and catering during the festival have been provided by High Decks the Village Society, Stage, now the West White Rotary Club, with catering led by Bev Fryer, Sue Abbott and Anne O'Connell. Coach trips to the island this year, 2019, coaches mainly as part of their Tinsel and Turkey trips from Dorset, Yorkshire, Kent, South Wales and Hampshire. There has been a tremendous improvement for local businesses who have helped in so many ways with programmes, foodstuff, electrical items, timber, mulled wine, outside trees, everything donated.
Merry Christmas, a safe and healthy New Year, and please join in with, we wish you a Merry Christmas. Amen. Thank you so much indeed. Thank you all for coming. The wind is blowing up from the sea. So keep your heads down. Safe and home. Many people associate brass bands with Christmas. And every year, the Sandown and Shanklin Military Band add plenty of cheer with their stirring carols and Christmas tunes. <laughs> two years the Credon Ensemble have performed in the more peaceful surroundings of the Isle of Wight Pearl. venue was added which helped to accommodate some of the 250 trees entered in this year's festival. From, from here. We also had a 15 minute version of Dicking's Christmas Carol which was performed in North Street. This shows the wide variety of things which can be found in a most unique festival. It's Christmas Day! Why? Why are the Cratchits all dressed in rags? And so little to eat on Christmas Day! You don't pay them enough to feed the whole family. Today the children will eat, but Bob and his wife will starve. Oh, what, what's wrong with the little one? Tiny Tim. <laughs> oh, Tiny Tim is very sick. They don't have the money to send for help. He probably won't survive. Daddy took my daddy Oh, glory be! Then I haven't missed it. You have not. Ah, please, please, take this money and go and buy the finest Christmas food you can find and take it. To the Cratchit's house. But, but, Ebenezer, there's a lot of money in here. <laughs> I know, I know. Give the rest to the poor. Goodness gracious me, I tell you. Merry Christmas and welcome home, Uncle Ebenezer. Oh, God bless us, uh, everyone. everyone. Joyous souls together, la 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 la. Heed the 
Rejoice on the winds and weather. La, 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 la. As villagers and visitors, families and friends, young and old, join together in Bryston's Christmas Tree Festival, we have, through these trees, an opportunity to escape from the frantic preparations and materialism surrounding us today. Here we can reflect on the sadness, suffering, loneliness and poverty far and near. But through them radiantly shines the Christmas message of love, friendship, hope, joy and peace on earth, goodwill to all men, now and in the days to come. <laughs> 